So uh, this all uh, started with a BitTorrent client called Transmission. We've used it. Everybody's used it. I think it was. it's probably the number one mm -hmm. BitTorrent client on Macintosh. Somebody hacked their website. And for a couple of days, when you downloaded Transmission from the website, you didn't get the Transmission you thought you were getting. You got Transmission with a malware installed K OS 10 KE Ranger A and it's ransomware. Now this is something that's plagued the Windows scene for a couple of years and it's very lucrative for the bad guys. It uses strong encryption. Good encryption. We don't I don't know about KE Ranger but uh, on the on the Windows side, uh Crypto Locker and its ilk use uh you know strong encryption to encrypt your data. And then pop up a thing saying, hi, <laughs> you may notice your data is unusable. Well, if you were to send us something like 40 Bitcoin, that's what happened to the hospital in Pasadena. Actually, they don't usually ask for that much. That was $17,000, 40 Bitcoin. Um, we will send you the key. You can unlock it. There's a lot of problems with this. First of all, you, you know, if you give them money, you're, uh, you're funding cyber terrorism. Uh, but also, a lot of times, you don't get a key that works. Or you never hear from them again. So, you know, the solution to this is having a good backup. So, Renee, um, is, do we know anything more than what I just said, the basic facts of it? No, I mean, you're spot on. At some point, uh, Transmission had this installed, so people who downloaded it, and they figured there might have been up to 6,500 people who downloaded it during that window. Not all of those people would have installed it immediately, of course, but if you downloaded it uh, and installed it, then you would be infected with these files. If those files hadn't phoned home yet and started doing the encryption process, you can go into terminal and remove them. If they had, then you, if you're lucky enough or if you're smart enough to have a good backup strategy, you probably need to go back and roll you know, use Time Capsule or Backblaze or anything you know, that does versioning, which Time Capsule yes. does, will be okay. Because what happens, of course, is once that's encrypted, it's backed up by any backup tool. So the most recent backup, you know, as soon as you discover that, you're, you're probably already backed up the encrypted version of the file. But but like with Time Machine, you can go back versions, and some of the, but at some point, one of them will be unencrypted. Yeah, and the interesting thing here, I mean, the good and bad thing here is it only affected you if you turned off use Mac App Store apps only because, of course, transmission is available on the web. But they did have a trusted Apple certificate, a developer certificate. Yeah, so that's that the key. Most The default, and most people set it up so that I don't want to just limit myself to the App Store, yeah. but I have that middle setting, which is, as you said, App Store or signed by Apple. In this case, yeah. it was. Yeah, so that means that it would launch. If you double-clicked on it, it would, it would actually launch and let you go through the setup process. How do they do that? How did the bad guys modify the file but not modify apples uh doesn't apple's well, they, certificate they their certificate they applied for the, the bad guys did yeah they apply as a normal company as a legitimate company i forget oh. the name of it but there was a legitimate company certificate on it they acquired it they signed with that certificate put it on there now of course as minute apple is alerted the good part of this process is that they can uh add the definitions to x protect which is the built-in anti-malware function of of os 10 and they also revoke the certificate which means that if you hadn't launched it yet the next time you try to launch it gatekeeper activates and says this is corrupted please trash it immediately and it just will not allow it to run on your system that's a that's a good system. Uh, Ke Ranger asks for a single Bitcoin, a mere four hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, so there's no guarantee that if you pay it, you'll actually be unlocked. There's no, no guarantee that they're not leaving stuff on your computer to lock it again in three yeah. or six months and make sort of extortion wear out of it. So it's the ideal is always have a good backup strategy in place. The uh, certificate was given. Uh, Apple gave the certificate to a Turkish company. Yeah. Uh, it has revoked those the certificate. That's kind of um, something that is important to know, which is that Apple apparently doesn't do a lot of due diligence before awarding a certificate. It just gives them a kill switch. Yes. So that's... Well, I mean, I think it does, like, we applied for one, I think, when we started doing uh, our apps, and, and you had to go through a, a fairly rigorous process. Like, you had to prove that you were a company. Oh, okay. They, they double-checked a whole bunch of stuff. They had to make sure who was signing for the company and that that person was on the company. I don't know what it's... It may be different given the laws and jurisdictions in Turkey, but it, it, it was quite... Like, we had the problem because Mobile Nations is doing... Like, smartphone experts is doing business as Mobile Nations, so they wouldn't accept Mobile Nations. We had to do it as the original company name. Right. Uh, so it, there was some rigmarole to get it set up, so it wasn't an easy process. Steve Wong is asking on Twitter, if you had transmission and ran the normal update, would you have been infected? 
It was in the installer. So that's the interesting thing about this. The other reason is like you can't trust the installer anymore either, obviously. But if you download some apps, you download the entire app again and then you replace it. Some apps, it does an installation in place and relaunches itself. I'm not familiar with transmissions process. So I don't want to ever say somebody is safe if there is some chance of risk. So I, I would just burn the app to the ground and reinstall it fresh from the website if I it's, had any. It's okay issues. now on the website. It's fixed. Yeah. Um, and this is an open source project. So it's it was probably fairly simple for a bad guy to download everything and, and add this. Um, the, the infected transmission installers added an extra file called general.rtf in the transmission.app contents resources directory. So you could open the, you know, right click uh, show contents on the transmission app and go to the contents resources directory, look for general.rtf. It is not an RTF, it's a Mako format except executable. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so there is a myth. Some people believe that open source software is inevitably safer. And as we learn, you know, Macintosh isn't safer. Open source isn't safer. Just because you can look at the code doesn't mean there's someone looking at every, you know, the billions and billions of lines of code. You have to be careful no matter what kind of software you're running. And Scooter X in the chat room is telling me that what the transmission folks have done, which is great, uh, if you update to 2.92, uh, it will detect and remove the malware installed by a 2.90, the rogue 2.90 install. Now... <laughs> That's a little nerve-wracking because you'd have to run the app, and uh, there's always a possibility. Do we know of anybody who uh, got bit was encrypted? I haven't seen anyone actually say it. They just they've, I've seen mostly just potential numbers and methods for removing it. But I assume I think it was Palo Alto that yeah the, the researchers that caught yeah. it yeah Palo Alto Networks their security researchers. This is their I'm looking at their website. The uh, post by Claude Shao and Jin Chen. Um, they detected it. Probably somebody reported it, I would guess. Um, and so the kind of person running transmission might also be the kind of person running packet sniffers and running inspectors to see yeah. what processes are running permanently. Would on Little their Snitch computers. help you in something like this? Uh, it might. So some of the things they were recommending, and I hate saying recommending because this is not a mainstream solution, is that you run a bunch of monitoring tools that sort of looks for these kinds of changes, yeah. looks for new persistent applications, monitors network activity. I don't think uh, little snitch would necessarily help because all it does is tell you, warn you if there's outbound activity that you haven't seen before. So I don't know if there'd be outbound activity before you got encrypted. Before it calls its command and control and then starts the encryption process. Right. I don't know. Is there, yeah, maybe there's, is there, if there's command and control over like a, a bot out there maybe. I believe they said it takes a couple of days for it to phone home and start. Right. It was supposed to uh, take effect yesterday. Yeah. So app, again, Apple's revoked the certificate so you wouldn't be able to install it if you had if you downloaded it over the weekend and you had a bad one. Gatekeeper will block it. Yeah. And uh, they've modified, and this is actually really great, this X-Protect. Why don't you tell people about that? I don't know if everybody knows about that because it happens behind the scenes. Yeah, so it, it's basically, I think people are familiar with this on the Windows side, at least. There's there's It's first-party anti-malware, and it basically it runs on OS X. Apple continually updates the definition, and it detects for known malware signatures when they're trying to get onto the Mac. Because you need them, it's just, things are so complicated now, you have to have multi-level security. You have to stop things from getting on there. You have, to, you have to stop things from launching if they do get on there. You have to have systems in place to prevent them from getting out of the sandbox of whatever they manage to infect, if they do manage to infect those things. So uh, X-Protect is that first line is those definitions that tries to stop anything from getting on your system that is known to be harmful. Very good. And it's interesting, especially now, because, you know, the old theory was that, you know, there was no, there was no uh, viruses or malware on the Mac. And part of the reason for that was economics. The Mac market share was so small that it literally was not worth people's time to go out and create these programs. And, and it was resilient enough that you probably wouldn't get a lot of victims. And if you can't scale it, then you're putting an awful lot of effort into getting just a few people. But once you can find something that can infect 100, 1,000, 10,000 people, uh, you build it once, you deploy it, and then you hopefully get... You know, small amounts of money. They're smart. They don't ask for a huge amount of money from everybody. They try to make it almost like patent trolls. They try to make it low enough that people it's will just pay a it. Bitcoin. Than Surely you have one Bitcoin lying around. Absolutely. And when you get to a certain amount of people and it's it's easy enough to make the software, that's when you start seeing little outbreaks like this. Yeah. Actually, four hundred bucks is not an insignificant amount of money. And if you got a thousand people, uh, you know, and that sixty five hundred downloads in two days, you could easily have a thousand infected computers. Yep. That's $400,000. That's not insignificant. And some guy in Turkey, uh, probably an out-of-work programmer. <laughs> there was an episode of The Good Wife, I think, where they went through this where all their computers got encrypted and they kept trying to find yeah. out, how do we pay you? And it was harder and harder to actually pay the person. Yeah, don't pay them. Uh, law enforcement will tell you that. The solution is have a good backup. And it, this, if it didn't get bit good news, 
this is a little um, warning bell for you to get something. Uh, lots of, you know, uh, Carbonite, our, our sponsor Carbonite works, as you mentioned, Backblaze, Time Machine works. Mm -hmm. Something that does versioning. Even Dropbox. <clears throat> like I keep my documents folder on Dropbox, so a copy of everything I have is on Dropbox. Yeah. Now, the problem is if you have continual backup to Dropbox, uh, at some point the crypt encrypted files will get backed yeah. up. Um, so that's potentially a problem. So you want something with versioning. Actually, I don't know if Carbonite does versioning on Macintosh. It does on Windows. That's one of the I've reasons gotten why... older versions from Dropbox. I don't know about that either. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, okay. I think, yeah. You, you, you can rewind on Dropbox. Oh, that's, that's one right. Of the reasons, that's right. That's one of the reasons why part of a backup strategy should include an air gap of some kind, mm -hmm. meaning that I've got you, you've got a, at least one backup that is completely in amber. It's on uh, if, if you've got your documents folder on a flash drive and you've unplugged it and it's in a drawer somewhere or you've got a backup hard drive that's in a drawer somewhere. Uh, part of my strategy is that I have a, a separate NAS uh, that does backup so that there is definitely a place that there are, there are, for important documents, there are two or three places that no automated software can get at it so that in a worst case scenario, uh, I think that I, I think with my current strategy, the very worst case is that I've got everything that I did as of at worst about two weeks ago. So that so long as I can get at this physical media that is not attached to anything during those two weeks, it's not being backed up. Uh, nothing can nothing can touch me except for and, losing two weeks worth of data. And for the folks that are over, overly paranoid, uh, uh, I have about every quarter, I have the, the key documents. There's photos and certain things. There's a little bit of an expense to it, but I, the, the most important photos and the most important other bits are saved on, on drives. And oftentimes I will, about once a quarter, every, every six months at the most, have, a, have another drive that actually holds those data. And right now it's not that much. It's less than a terabyte. Um, that is not been updated. I have this little library <laughs> of, of, of stuff because if I get hacked, I want to be able to go back and I don't want to ever have written over that. Um, and it has saved me a couple of times when I've had bad drives and stuff like that. It's probably a little excessive. And at some point I, I usually, you know, it's, I don't keep them forever, but, um, you know, I want to make sure that I have six months to a year of, of backups that I can, um, you know, run back to that, that I wasn't constantly updating so that I don't constantly, you know, possibly get something into the middle of it. And if it's something was there for years, then I'm in trouble. 